Now to the Grand Prix season, which in Europe anyway starts on Sunday, May the 7th, and there'll be live coverage on ITV. Recently, three times former world champion Jackie Stewart had the opportunity of track testing the most prominent of this year's crop of Formula One cars. Here's his exclusive film report. For the first time in the history of Grand Prix motor racing, one driver is going to have the opportunity of testing all of the top Formula One cars in the, in the racing field. That lucky driver is going to be me. The first car I'm going to try is the Ligier Matra. The engine in the Ligier, the Matra engine, is very smooth indeed. The power curve is very, very nice, sympathetic to the driver. It should be good in the rain because it's not too punchy. The power doesn't come in all at the one time. But the power is very nice. It feels very good. The gearbox is a little difficult, a little heavy for the driver to work with. Overall, the car was very pleasant to drive. The team were very good to work with. We did our changes in the car, the suspension, very quickly indeed. Everyone was very enthusiastic. And from my point of view, a very sympathetic car to drive in the end. The Marlboro McLaren, a car obviously that handles well, a car that has done so well this year or last year in the World Championship and the same basic car that uh, James Hunt won his World Championship with. This is going to be an interesting comparison because we're testing this car on the very same day as we tested the Ligier, so I'll have an opportunity to see the difference between the two cars. The McLaren is extremely good. It, first of all, puts the power on the road in an incredible way. Probably the best car I've ever driven for putting power on the road. Really, for 480 horsepower or whatever it is, it really has incredible traction. The front end also points very well. There's a little bit of understeer, but when the driver enters a corner, it goes exactly where the driver wants it. It's a very clean car to drive. Uh, at the moment, I'm not very comfortable in the car. The seat doesn't fit me correctly. I'm having to hold myself in the car, but really, it is an extreme extremely good motor car. If I had to judge the car on a scale of 10, I would have to give it certainly a minimum of 9. To drive the six-wheel tail for me uh, was an exciting adventure, simply because that 1977 will probably be the last year that a six-wheel racing car, at least in Formula One, will prove to be in the field. Driving the car felt a little bit like it looked. It felt almost as if I were driving two cars. The front end was very much different from the rear end. The car itself uh, seemed to understeer, that's to say the front end pushes, in other words, you turn the wheel and the car goes straight on rather than go around the corner um, a little bit. And then after you go into the corner in this position, the car changes into oversteer. That means to say that when the car begins to slide, you apply opposite lock and the car begins to slide down the road. Now this transfer between understeer and oversteer is a very delicate balance for a racing driver. The new four-wheel tittle, 008, is of course very new. was very good going in mm -hmm. through the whole first part of the corner on a trailing throttle but it's not trailing you know you've mm. taken away the overrun yeah. so it's, yeah, it's good you're going steady. you're going in very steady. nicely without accelerating yeah. but without yeah. decelerating yeah steady steady yeah. there's no understeer no trace of understeer there the formula one lotus is the first car that i've driven in this series which has been completely different from when I left the sport in 1973. I think the technique of driving the Lotus is something very special. And I think that technique has changed. Of all the other cars that I've driven, I believe there has been very little advancement with regards to evolution. I don't think the technique of driving has changed very much at all. But with the Lotus, I do think that I would have to change my technique if I were to get down to a competitive time.
There's a big question mark above the fact of will turbocharging come to Formula One. Renault have committed themselves completely. The Renault to drive, however, was very good. The engine performance once the turbocharger comes in is truly spectacular. Uh, however, it doesn't come in with anything like the spontaneity that you would expect from a full-blooded racing car. And this would seem to be the biggest problem of the Renault Turbo at this time. It's, uh, it's a little inflexible. In other words, if you're going through a corner and you've been off the throttle, when you press the throttle again, there's a big uh, wait before the car accelerates hard again. Uh, the Brabham Alfa Romeo, first of all, I'd have to say, is a very flexible car to drive and a very comfortable car to drive. Perhaps even a little bit too comfortable, because I've found that racing cars, if they're too nice, they seldom give the very best result possible. They have to be a little bit bitchy, or you don't get absolutely the highest performance factor out of them. And at this time, the Brabham seems to be a little too sympathetic towards the driver. On the positive side, as I say, the car feels very comfortable. It doesn't quite seem to have as good rear adhesion as I would have expected. The car doesn't seem to quite transmit the power as well, for example, as the McLaren or the Lotus cars.